open up, up, open up, shut it down like a Macintosh. Open up, open up, open up, open up. Once it got a little intense, it offered me laughing ass. <laughs> I don't understand why this was a different thing. <laughs> like, what is this? It's laughing because I'm laughing at it. Because I'm laughing, the fact that it do nothing for me. Pretty much. I mean, like, was it supposed to be for a pain? Is that what it's supposed to be? No, I don't think so. Nope, not it. That's not it. It didn't do anything for my pain. No, it didn't do any of that. If, if anything, it was a distraction. Which, which the lady from my class told me. She was like, it's more of a distraction than anything, but it also kind of relaxes your mind. No, no, just a distraction. Like, it literally just kept me busy doing something else besides focusing on actual attraction it didn't take the pain away though like i still felt all of it it was still hurting so and i mean it helped with my breathing like because i had to breathe it in so that helped out you know and then this is a big thing so i always i always heard you know breathe your contraction makes it better i didn't realize how bad it gets if you don't like if you don't concentrate on your breathing and keep everything at a nice pace and keep everything, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Not organized, but just you maintain, you know, or something like, I can't think of the word right now. But anyways, as long as you just focus on your breath, it helps out a lot. Cause once you start getting riled up and you can't control it, like, like, the pain gets somewhere much worse. Cause there were moments where I could not control my breathing. Like I couldn't control, you know, just maintaining that smooth in and out, inhale, exhale, because I was in so much pain. So, um, like I said, the tapping helped out, the breathing helped out. Another thing was the counter pressure. My boyfriend and mother's hands were so sore by the time I had my son. And I know it because my back was like hurting after I had him because every contraction I had, I needed them to knuckle, like dig in and dig in and push as hard as you can, as hard as they possibly could while going through contraction. And that is what helped me get through it. Um, yeah, if they weren't in there, I don't, I don't know. And there was another one where you can hold the hips on both sides and squeeze them in together. Mm -mm. That didn't work for me. Um, <laughs> it's different things you can try, but it's like they just both wasn't working. Okay. Um, and then it got, it took a turn for the worst, not for the worst, but it just took left because I was going through contractions and I went from four centimeters, five centimeters, and six and seven and eight and <laughs> eight was like, uh uh, mm -mm. hold on, wait, we're gonna stay right here for a minute. We were there for five hours. I was eight centimeters dilated for five hours. And this was my contraction was at the peak. It was back to back to back to back, no breaks, okay? Contractions don't get tired. You do, okay? And this, this is what was going on. And it was like, what is this? This is not, this is not what I was told. I was told I was gonna get a break. Where is it? Where is my break at? Like, when can I get one? You know, and it, it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. And it was just so painful. And with the reason why I was and ate some minutes so long because the fact the way he was facing he wasn't facing the right way. And it's just, he, he so it was hard for him to come down. 
So at one point I sat on the edge, like I scooted down. I don't remember how I got down there, y'all. Cause like I said, I wasn't moving cause I was scared. I knew I was scared to go up again. So I got to the edge of bank crisscross and I was literally like this, going back and forth, breathing, tapping, through my attractions. And I kinda want y'all to see like what I mean. So yeah, I was in my gown and I was like this, swaying, going through attractions, tapping, breathing through it and just going through the motion of it. And I was like, I lost all track of time. I I didn't know what time Things were happening. I just knew. I just thought I was a five. I was saying the only reason I know it's a five hours for eight centimeters because my mom and my boyfriend told me that. Otherwise, man, I wouldn't have known. Like I just know it all lasted forever. It all lasted too long. Pretty much is what I feel about it. So I was doing that, and then I did at one point my sun was coming up, but I was like, I mean, it couldn't have been that long. Like it still didn't dawn on me. Like oh, the sun's coming up. It's a whole new day. And you still not have a baby yet. So, um, yeah, so I'm sitting here going through the motions. And while I was rocking, within the little bit of breaks I had because I was so tired, I would doze off. And with me dozing off for a little bit of time, when my contraction came, it scared me. So I'll be rocking and dozing off. I was like, <laughs> Like I did like a big, like a horror movie scream. And then I calmed back down and I breathed through it. And there was another nurse in there. I did not get her name, but she kept telling me, she was like, you gotta ride the wave. And I think she's the reason why I was like rocking. And she was like, just ride the wave, just breathe through it. And the main thing she said to me that stuck was that if you do not breathe, your baby cannot breathe. And it was like, okay. Let's, let's fix that. Let's fix that. So after that, I, I corrected my breathing and then from that point on, like I didn't go back to sleep. <laughs> Cause I was like, I realized when I doze off is when I lose control of my breathing. So as long as I stayed up and focused on it, I was able to maintain my breathing. So, um, yeah. Um, realized that within like that fourth hour, that won't get any problems with eight centimeters. Even though my contractions were coming back to back to back, it was like, what's one contraction happening if he's not coming down any further? Okay, I wore it back. I didn't like it had it. It was still there. It hadn't burst or whatever. So, got back to head to bed, lay down. We tried to pee that. Did on one side thirty minutes. Flipped over to the other side thirty minutes. She checked me again. When she checked me again, I was fully dilated. <gasps> oh my god! I was so happy, y'all. I was so happy. And what well, I forgot to say that before, when did she burst my water bag? Oh my God. I think she, I think she did before we did the peanut or sometime before then. Sometimes it was those five hours of being as dilated. She um, popped my bag. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. I don't know, but yeah. She did that and um, the peanut helped him come down. So before the doctor came in, she told me to do, she told me to do practice pushes, pushes. Now the main thing was for me learning from my class was that I wanted to move during labor. Didn't happen. And I didn't want to lay over my back. Didn't happen. I had to lay over my back. Um, and it wasn't like a force. Like I asked her, can I move? And she was like, if you want to, you can, but you're honestly doing perfect like this. Like I pushed for an hour. Because the way he was facing, but every time I pushed, I did make progress. Like it wasn't like I was pushing and nothing was happening. Like even when I was doing the practice pushes, pushes, she said that I was doing very well with that. So. It was just a process to get him. I mean, he was eight pounds, okay? Um, I'm not the smallest girl in the world, but people don't realize it doesn't matter how big or small you are on the outside. It matters on your frame, your bones, and all that stuff. Like, 
everything stretches but so much. Your muscles, all the tissue, like it, but so much, okay? If you can't push the baby out, you can't push the baby out. Thankfully, I could. So, one of the cool things that mom noticed, because she was all up in there, okay? Tom boyfriend, give me back here. I don't see none of that down there. Do back here behind me, supporting me, fanning me, because I was hot. It was hot. Y'all was a lot of work. I was sweating. So I needed him there, cooling me off, fanning. My mom was up there holding my leg. And the nurse on one, my nurse Kaya, Kaya, sorry, was on one leg. The other one, my mom was on the other leg, helping me. And she kept saying, I can see him, I can see him. And then she was like, oh my God, every time you push his head, it's turning. So when he came out, he was facing the right way, like down. But it was just right there he wasn't which is why while i was pushing it was like a relief like i will push any time but you want me to go through back labor oh that's that's a bit much like <laughs> the pushing was relieving and don't get me wrong you have that ring of fire when his head come through but i think because the fact that i knew that was going to come and i expected it i out is more motivation and also I had a mirror so I can see what was happening so that was also another motivation like I saw him when he was coming I couldn't see as well as the doctor did of course because she was like right there and she was like oh my gosh I can see his hair he has a hair full of hair which I was so happy about because the whole superstition of um what is it if you I had like so like I've been heard it both ways. Like if you have heartburn, you're just gonna have a head full of hair. Then I heard if you have heartburn, you're gonna have no hair. So I don't really know. All right. I just know my baby had a head full of hair. I was very very happy about that. But yeah. So after 21 hours of excruciating back labor, tapping, locking, and breathing, um, um, we got through it. And then they he was out. Um, he swallowed some amniotic fluid. Thank God there was no meconium, but he swallowed some amniotic fluid, so they had to pump that out of him. Um, he did not have to go to NICU, which I was very happy about that because I was nervous about that. He didn't have to go to NICU, everything's perfectly fine. Um, he just had to pump him a couple times to get all the fluid out. At the end, that he was good. Um, with that being with that being said, I wasn't able to do breastfeeding as soon as most mothers do because usually you do it like immediately and I was able to do that because the fact that he already had fluid in him he didn't want to put more in him and you know just mess things up so yeah like um they had him I pushed him out they put him on me cleaned him off like I look at him I pushed him out and I was like oh my gosh I had a baby oh my gosh I had a baby oh my gosh I had a baby like I was like in shock I didn't do the I, I thought I was gonna cry I didn't cry I really didn't cry about him time at home but like i said i was in shock like i wasn't like a shot like an all shot like a amazing type of shock that i just i have my my own baby <laughs> and i i gave birth to my own baby like it was just all that was a shock um but yeah once i got through everything when we got through um giving birth to him the next thing they do we had to push out the placenta of course and i had delayed core clamping which i like because the hospital actually does that for everyone which is nice um had that and then they have to do the massage which is where they start from the top of your stomach and just push down and like push and all you hear is like gushing of fluid coming out like it's the blood and and you have fluid and whatever else is up in there all of it just comes out and they have like a little plastic thing covering it buckets on the floor to catch all of it and it's just it's not good and i had a second degree hair so she had to stitch me up that felt like forever like i felt like she was down there making a blanket or maybe some mittens i don't know like she was down there for a minute, okay? It was, a, it was a good minute. And I asked her, I was like, are you sure it's second degree? She was like, yeah, we're good, you're on the sun. I'm like, okay. I was like, I mean, you know, whatever you say. So yeah, that was, that was my labor and delivery. It was excruciating pain. And I will definitely do it again.
<laughs> no hesitation. No second thought about it. I will definitely do it again. There was a moment of, and not judging anyone else, it's just me personally, moment of weakness for me when I did want to do the epigrole. But they told me I could not because I was already far along. And, well, I could, but the fact me already been far along, then there's a chance that it wouldn't affect me anyways by the time I had a baby. Like, it wouldn't be myself long enough to really actually do anything. And it was like, well, there's no point of that. So, I did have a moment of that. But, um, like I said, my support team there, my mom, my boyfriend, when I saw and saw that, their face, like, looked so hurt and devastated. So, as soon as I asked why I was ready, as soon as I did, because I was like, this is not me. This is not what I wanted. I would not, nope. And then Kai, like, <laughs> she was on my team for all natural. So she helped, like, talk me out of it and whatnot as well. So, yeah. Like I said, I would definitely do it again. I pray. I pray to God that my next labor will not be a back labor. That this baby will know which way to face, you know. But um, if I do, then I do. But I definitely plan on doing this again. Yep. Maybe a little quickly, but it's okay. It's okay. We're cool. All right, that's it, you guys. So I hope you have enjoyed another one of my story times. I hope please educate someone, prepare someone from for you know what it's like to go through birth unmedicated. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified. Bye, y'all. Thank you.